Stuart, the news about Dan Cole um, broke last night. The disappointing news he'll be out for the rest of the Six Nations. How important has he been as a, as a player to you during your tenure? Very important, really. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a British line tight head and uh, um, as everyone knows, in a specialist position like tight head, you know, you need quality and uh, he's played virtually every minute of every game I've been in charge of. Um, you know, I gave David Wilson an opportunity against Argentina in the uh, Autumn Internationals. Um, but no, he's been the mainstay of the pack, really, and it's, uh, you know, obviously desperately disappointing news. We spoke about his durability just a couple of weeks ago. Do you think he's been a victim of his own consistency in terms of minutes played for England, as you mentioned, minutes played for Leicester as yeah, well? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's obviously been well managed as a young player growing up. You know, he's, he's shared the, the tight edge duties of Castro Giovanni at the club and, you know, he's developed, um, you know, to be extremely durable as, as a tight head. I think when you play in a position like that, they're obviously going to be wear and tear on your body. Uh, we've diagnosed this early. The good thing is, is that we've seen it early. Um, it's not something that's um, prevented him from playing, uh, but it's an accumulation, I guess, of, of wear and tear. So I think on the positive front, if we give him a decent rest now and get it sorted, then it'll only extend his career way beyond you know, 2019. Is it a case of wait and see? What is the prognosis? Will he be available for the yeah. tour to New Zealand, for example? Well, I've seen another specialist tomorrow, so we'll get more information then. But uh, I think let nature take its course and, and let it heal on its own is, seems to be the, the sensible solution. If that's weeks or months, it's probably months, I would suggest, rather than weeks. So whether he makes the tour or not, we'll have to wait and see. You know, hopefully he'll make Leicester's play off on our tour. But if he doesn't, we've got other players to look at now and other players we need to develop in that position. You mentioned David Wilson there, his return is especially timely given this has happened. And how close has he been pushing Dan Cole in the last 12 months? You've really you mentioned before he's really improved and impressed you. Well, he, he, you know, he, earned, he earned his starting point on, on merit against Argentina, from my point of view. Um, and that was on the back, really, of the Argentina tour in the summer, where I think he'd had a consistent run against the Bath leading into the, uh, uh, the end of the season. He played extremely well in the Barbarians game and... He was one of our standout players in that tour. Our scrum was excellent and uh, he was a big part of it. So, very experienced member of our squad, understands the systems and structures and, uh, you know, he slotted seamlessly back in. Is it feasible for him to go straight back in against Ireland on Saturday? Has he had enough minutes, do you think? Yeah, I think so, yeah. You know, I mean, he's uh, a player of that quality, you know, and in that position, that special position, you know, you need all the experience you can get. So, um, uh, yeah, no, we're pretty, we're pretty confident he'll, he'll come back in and be fine. Speaking of props, albeit in rugby league, Sam Burgess's move has been confirmed overnight. You've met him, uh, as, you, as you mentioned before. What attributes do you think and characteristics has he got as a person that you think he can make a, a move like this successful? It's his leadership, really, I guess, that stood out for me and his mental toughness, his ability to, to want the ball when the game's on the line. I think that was probably the, the defining thing for me and, and certainly his performance in the Rugby League World Cup showed showed what a leader and what a player he is you know he leads by example um you know, on the training field and also on, on the field as well so i think they're the qualities really i think they'll bring and you know he's got a lot of steps and a lot of hurdles to overcome he's got to learn the game first of all he's got to play club rugby um and he's got to play and earn his right to play in the england team alongside everyone else you know and there's some very good players in his position he'll arrive in october which is about three months until the six nations 2015 is that enough time do you think to, to learn the game and, and, and push to be part of your squad I'd be impressed if it was. Um, you know, there's some good players ahead of him, and uh, my suggestion would be that, you know, that 2015 year, uh, January onwards, you know, he'll be playing club rugby at Bath, and, and rightly so, and he's going to earn the right to get in the World Cup training squad. Do you see similarities in the way Sonny Bill Williams plays rugby league and the way Sam Burgess plays rugby league, and therefore perhaps similarities in how they might play in positionally in, in rugby union? Yeah, I think that's, that's the closest comparison, really. You know, they. They're both rugby league forwards, but rugby, well, potentially rugby in back. So you know, we'll wait and see how it how it plays out. Um, he's certainly uh, got the attributes of, of Sonny Bill and his ability to break the line and and take on people defensively. Um, and you know, for a, for a player who's born in Yorkshire, it's great to be able to bring you know this English player back into into England. You know, I know he wanted to return home, having lived in Australia for a while. So I think part of the decision was actually about coming home. Uh, and living at home. So I'm sure it'll settle in well at Bath and then we'll go from there.